Hello, little scientists and mathematicians. Today, we are going to read a story called These Bees Count. Written by Alison Fermento and illustrated by Sarah Snow. Mr. Tate's class loves taking field trips. Today, their bus went to a farm. Farmer Allen led the class through a big field. There weren't any cows, horses, or sheep. There were only bees and tall flowers. Amy picked a flower and twirled it. Eli looked around. Is this a flower farm? Farmer Ellen smiled. No, but we grow lots of wildflowers. They walked through a grove of blossoming apple trees. Is this a tree farm? Natalie asked. Trees grow here too, Farmer Ellen said. But at the busy bee farm, we farm bees and honey. Honey tastes good, said Jake. Eli held on to Mr. Tate. Bees sting. Only when they're afraid or angry, said Farmer Ellen. And beekeepers always dress for safety before visiting the hives. Farmer Ellen took everyone to a small shed. Mr. Tate helped give out beekeeper gear. The children pulled white jumpsuits over their clothes. Shin smoothed the net over her face. Here comes the bride. We look like astronauts, said Jake. I feel safe in here, said Eli. Farmer Ellen showed the class a field full of tall boxes. Welcome to the bee yard. These are bee houses or apiaries. Honeybees live here in hives. Most fly out each day to work. Bees work, Jake asked. Yes, they collect pollen, which is tiny powder-like grains and flowers for their food. This powder is carried on their legs to crops, flowers, plants, and trees. and helps them grow. Sharing pollen this way is called pollination. Sharing's good, said Shin. Farmer Ellen pushed a can with a long spout into a hole in the back of one of the bee houses. This smoker will help us see the bees. She squeezed the handle and wisps of smoke puffed out. Hundreds of bees followed the smoke trail and flew into the air. Farmer Ellen said, now watch them work and hear what they say. Bees don't talk, Amy said. They do, Farmer Ellen said. Listen to their buzz. Everyone watched and listened. This is what they heard. One by one, we zip up high, buzzing through the bright blue sky. We fly over two waving dandelions, inviting us to visit. We find three wild strawberries bursting with sweetness. Four apple blossoms tickle us with soft petals. Five poppies stretch tall, greeting us like best friends. We stop for a drink where six farmhands water a crop of raspberries. Bees sure get thirsty, Jake said. Shh, said Amy, they're still buzzing. We see seven clovers dance in the sunlight. Eight flowering cherry trees shimmer pink and white. In the garden, nine shiny pea pods flutter in the breeze. Before we fly home, ten tulips stand and nod, thankful for our pollen. Buzzing, flying, working, we do more than you may know. Each of us is nature's farmer helping food and flowers grow. What did you hear? asked Farmer Ellen. Bees count, Chin said. Why else are bees important? Mr. Tate asked. They make honey, Natalie said. Yes, said Farmer Ellen. Bees drink nectar, a sweet liquid from plants, and carry it back to their hives. Why? asked Natalie. Juice inside a bee's stomach changes the nectar into honey, said Farmer Ellen. Bees spit the honey into a honeycomb made from beeswax. Then worker bees dry the new honey by flapping their wings faster than we can blink. Jake and Natalie tried flapping their arms as fast as bee wings. Amy knelt to watch a bee on a clover blossom. Bees sure are busy. Yes, said Farmer Allen. And without bee pollen, crops wouldn't grow and we wouldn't have food to eat. Eli said, bees are nicer than I thought. Farmer Ellen smiled. It's time to check the hives. Everyone helped slide wooden frames from the bee houses. They found one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten golden honeycombs. 
Farmer Allen said to get the honey from honeycombs, we'll use an extractor. This machine spins honey out, which then flows into jars. We put a cap on tight and label the jar, all ready to take home. Before the class boarded the bus to leave, Farmer Allen pulled jars from a crate. Would you like a gift from the bees? Sweet, said Jake. Thanks for honey, bees, shouted Natalie. And for helping plants grow, said Shin. A bee whisked past Amy's ear. She waved at it. Buzz to you too. Let's go do an activity together. All right, little scientists. There are so many bees in our world that I thought we could review the continents and also learn about some bees found on different continents all around the world. So if you haven't already learned the names of the continents, be sure to watch our other videos. I'll link them below. Let's get started. The bees that I'm going to use today are designed by Twig and Moth, and I will also link the Etsy link below. If you're a student of mine, then you will already have these to work with this week. Um, but if you're not, um, just check the link below and you can purchase them from her site on Etsy. All right, so I have a map of the world and you can use any map. I put little, I taped little um, toothpicks to my bees after I colored them, um, but you can just stick these down onto a map. You don't have to do it this way. I'm just using a map that happens to have little holes, so I'm going to stick them in there for uh, just for our lesson. So this, you can see some blue on this bee. Now I've personally never seen a bee that has blue markings on it. Um, this bee is called the blue banded bee. You can find this bee in Australia. It's a native to Australia and um, it thrives in tropical climates. So these are solitary bees and they're important pollinators for food. Um, they pollinate using a method called buzz pollination where they hold onto the flower and vibrate their little wings and that's how they loosen the pollen. So we're going to put the blue banded bee here in Australia. Now, the next bee we're going to talk about is named the Southeastern Blueberry Bee. Now this bee is called Blueberry and blueberries are blue, but this bee is not blue as you can see. But as its name suggests, it's an important pollinator for blueberries. And they nest in the soil, and you can find them in North America. And they kind of look like smaller bumblebees. So we're going to put them in North America. The next one is called the hairy footed flower bee. And it looks like this. Now, you can find this bee in Europe and Asia. And they are named hairy-footed, why do you think? Yes, because they have extra long hairs on their middle legs. If you look closely, you can see that. All right, so this can, like I said, go in either Europe or Asia. If you want, you can print two of them out to go in each of them, but I'm gonna put mine in, um, Europe. All right. Now, the next one has a funny name. It's called a teddy bear bee. And it, why do you think this bee may be called a teddy bear bee? It's kind of furry right there in the top part of the body, right? Kind of like a teddy bear. These are really fast flying bees, and you can find them in Australia. So I'm gonna put it here in New Zealand, but 
Australia and New Zealand share a similar climate. Okay, the next bee up is our blue orchard bee. And like its name suggests, it's blue. This bee lives in North America. And bee farmers and gardeners really like these bees because they help pollinate fruit trees and other food crops. All right, many of you have seen the next bee. It's the black and gold bumblebee. And the bumblebee lives in North America. It lives mostly in the eastern part of North America and Canada. So I'm actually going to move this little guy over here. I'm going to put the bumblebee here in Canada. Okay, our next bee is called the Bryony Mining Bee. And you can find this bee in Europe, all across Europe. And its name comes from the fact that it pollinates from the right white briony plant. It's kind of, a, it's a type of vine. So all over Europe. And then here we have the red mason bee. And the red mason bee can be found across Europe, Asia, and even North Africa. So we'll put it up here in North Africa. Our next bee is the garden bumblebee. And this is found across Europe and Asia. And it's known for its long tongue. So let's stick it here in Asia. Next we have the Western honeybee. So some people call it the European honeybee and it's native to Europe. I'll stick it here. Now, because of humans, these have actually been spread across the entire globe, so they live in every continent except for Antarctica, where it's just too cold. Two more bees left that I wanna introduce you to. The next one is called the leaf cutter bee. And the reason why it's called a leaf cutter bee is that the females, the girls, line their nests with leaf pieces that are circles that they cut out with their jaws. So they make these circular shapes from the leaves by chomping on them, and then they use them for their nest. And you can find this bee on every continent except for Antarctica. So, I'm going to put it here in South America since we haven't put any bees there, but it actually lives on all continents. And then finally, last but not least, is the tawny mining beetle. And these are found in Europe. And they're very gentle bees. These bees actually do not sting. Lots of bees found in Europe. Can we? Fit it there. All right, it's your turn to go ahead and color your bees and find where they live. And if you have any other bees that you know about, uh, be sure to write me and tell me about what, what the name of the bee is and where it lives in the world. Thank you for joining me today. Remember to like and subscribe to support our channel.